Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast 181. Uh, we're here to talk tech, talk geek once again. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, uh, at MikeSorg.com as well. And uh, with me as, uh, well, one, well, it's coming to usual. Uh, this looks familiar, guys. <laughs> next next week we'll reverse it. Yeah, okay, okay. This works. And, but I won't swap the titles. Perfect. No one knows <laughs> See the if difference. anyone notices. <laughs> of course, uh, uh, mm. join us for a while now. John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? Not too bad. How are you? All right, all right. And also, Dutters. Hi. At K Dutters on the Twitter. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, this is the awesome cast. Uh, like I said, where we talk tech, we talk social media, we talk all things awesome. Uh, you can join us here. We're live every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And, of course, you can join us on Twitter at AwesomeCast, like right there in the corner. Um, also, you can drop us a line to AwesomeCast at sorgatronmedia.com. You can check us on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher. Uh, we're on Spreaker. Uh, we've been doing pretty good. I think there's been a few views on that as well. Uh, followers and all that kind of stuff. So go uh, search for us there as well. Um, and I, I understand there's a few people watching us on their Chromecast. That's what I'm tonight. hearing. Who, who was doing that in the chat? Uh, Father we, Spoon, I think, is, right? right? Yes, we have yeah. Spoon and Dabatech. Dabatech. All watching us big on their TVs. That's that's <laughs> that's amazing. This is This is consistently... The show that is watched on more TVs via Roku devices uh, than any other show. Like, like that's the only reason I still have Blip TV around, so we can have that Roku access. Even though you can't add new shows, you have to get your shows approved now. Oh, really? And yes, that like, like um, I think Unsung, they wouldn't approve un Unsung, and uh, there was another show I tried to get in there. So everything that's been in there, I can't add anymore. I, I don't know. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try. Uh, we did, we started a new show last week, Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, after we get somebody that has a webcam that's a little better than Joe Dabrowski's uh, <laughs> from 1996, we're uh, going to try to submit for it as well. Uh, but hey, you know it works. You know, um, so but this way, way you need to go. But you don't even need that anymore because you have Chromecast. Mm -hmm. So and we're all over the YouTubes. So uh, you know, subscribe to us and stuff. And I'm sorry, I'm I'm lame. So on Chromecast, is it you go to YouTube and it's watch it's live via the Hangout or is it? Um, I don't know how to, well, I think, I'm guessing they're just going to the browser here, because we're just broadcasting okay. on Justin TV. Um, we'll bring, we're, we'll actually be bringing Ustream back as well. We're testing this uh, on a new computer. We'll get into that here in a bit. Um, so they're probably just, just pushing the video from, from, from a, a Chrome tab, tab. From a Chrome tab. So that probably works pretty decently. So um, so let's start things. Well, I guess I should <clears> mention, um, Chill, I got a new computer. I heard. I, I, <laughs> you've gone I, to the dark side. I went to the dark side. I was talking to Krauss, actually, before we started a podcast earlier tonight uh, about about what I have. I, I, I got a Windows 8 machine. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's it's, sure? it's point one, right? It's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's brand new. Um, it's a Lenovo. Uh, I did a little bit of video blog on my personal uh, YouTube uh, and on my blog at sorgatron.com. Uh, so you can go check that out a little bit more info about it. But it's 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 nice. It's slick. I really wish I had another one to play video games on because this one I need to dedicate to the studio. So no more dragging my Mac Mini down here from the office. Uh, it's kind of nice. I was telling you I can I can actually render the show from the weekend while this is going on, so I get to open up some more time. Um, so yeah, it's dedicated to Wirecast, which we're we're doing this on. You notice the graphics are back because they were kind of crashing with us before. Um, so so because there was a thing with Wirecast 4 isn't compatible with the new Mavericks and you have to go by 5 and I was like well I might as well just go get a new computer um but no mostly I wanted it because the expandability I needed something with ports I need something mm -hmm. that can put a card in uh because I'm looking to expand to like like black magic cards firewire stuff I forgot like I have two firewire cards for you too they're not in that box they're in a perfect different I box. need firewire cards <laughs> but they are they are PCI so I don't know if they'll work in there uh express I don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll look at it. We'll look at it. Um, but no, and yeah, I, I, that's the other thing. I need to get uh, some some firewire cards in there so I can hook up the old cameras and um, and or I've been actually looking at some Black Magic stuff to maybe stick those in there. It's I think I filled all the ports on the back. What's that? Black Magic's expensive. It is. It's like two hundred bucks a pop. But I have this really good idea on how to replace my switcher for live shoots. 
ah. with a laptop and a couple of black magics and just do pure uh, HD for mm-hmm. the wrestling without really incurring much cost and having to drop six grand on a, 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 a oh, what do they call them? TriCaster. So I, cool. we've used the TriCaster, uh, the one guy I work with for what used to be Prime Wrestling. They had TriCaster. It's nice. It is a nice setup there. Uh, real pro. Real pro. Um, so wait, uh, other than that, other than my computer, uh, let's get into awesome <clears throat> things of the week. I have one. I have a feeling we're going to talk a good bit about it. So I want to go with you guys first. Uh, Darius, you had one. Ooh, I have all kinds yeah. of stuff today. Yeah, you have all kinds of stuff. Um, first thing, I don't know if you saw this, but our, our buddy, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, um, found a spider in his bathroom. Oh no. I know. Oh no. Crazy, crazy stuff going on. And, um, what he had used though was the interesting part is he p- took a picture of the spider and used this app called Jelly. Now, a big thing right now is these question and answer apps that you're seeing. Uh, essentially, either you post a picture or a video and somebody also in the, the using that app can respond to you with either a, you know, some text or a video or a picture. And um, it's big with the teenagers now. You know, they're, they're not doing what we're doing. They're doing these other things, of course, because they're much cooler than we are now. And there's a picture of his spider, by the way. Mm-hmm. Very frightening. And what it was kind of interesting and all, you know, kind of funny and gossipy is the that Jelly is one of the co-founders, Biz Stone of Twitter, actually started Jelly. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of funny in that regard. And the CEO, COO actually responded to Mark Zuckerberg and gave him a link to what kind of spider it was, which was pretty nifty. But you why know, couldn't you use something like Google Goggles? <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole idea is it's a social, though, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole it is idea social. Is I put a picture out, I put a video out, somebody responds to me. Now, <clears throat> this is my thing with this. Like, I and have you used this yet? Have you asked a question to it yet? No, I have not. You haven't? I, 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 like, I, I installed it. I'm like, okay, let's try this. And I'm like, I don't know what to ask. You know, mm-hmm. I had like, uh, you have to take a picture, you have to take a video in order to instigate the question. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I've seen other services like this. Mm-hmm. Maybe since it's connected to Twitter, maybe that'll give it a little more to go with. But then again, Twitter music didn't take off. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it's it's interesting because, like I said, it, it's a big thing with kids now, these question and answer sites. And um, you're kind of, you might, the nice thing is, is you might get a response from somebody who has either real world experience. Maybe you have a question about a certain, so a, something about somebody that, so maybe let's, say some sort of even disease wise or something or something that they have or that they personally are affected by, you could ask this question and get a response from somebody who feels the same way. It just, you know what I mean? As going through it, 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 that's a nice thing. But then you also, this is, this is a whole another section with these question and answer sites is you run into the fact that it could turn into some sort of bullying, Mm -hmm. which is another thing that's kind of coming out with the Yahoo answers. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Oh, if you ever watched those or ever got read a stream of those, those are just amazing. I, you know, I, I only like kind of stumble upon it when I'm actually looking for a question, you mm-hmm. know, an answer to a question. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, there's nowhere else to go. And mm-hmm. that's what comes up on the Google. Um, but but they, they actually alluded to it. Like it's a segment now on uh, at midnight, oh, nice. you know, so I, I caught that from the other night. Uh, so so you put a picture in and you, in, and you ask a question. I guess you can be like, what is this? You know, I, mm-hmm. I got concerned today. It's like I should send a picture. How do I know if this chicken is bad? But I figure yeah. by the time that I'm ready to cook it and everything, nobody's really going to answer me. Or would they? Yeah. You know, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I guess I should have. Uh, but it was kind of after the fact that I thought about it. Um, but I for I foresee lots of pictures of rashes. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Ugly, bu- bubbly rashes. So a lot of does this look infected kind of pictures. <laughs> that, that's wonderful um and they're even broken a lot of these um q a sites are broken into categories so you can go in and specifically maybe you have specific knowledge about something you can go in there as opposed to just kind of willy-nilly answering questions is it is it mobile only or can i get to it from like a browser uh it looks like it's It's mobile mobile only because you go to Mm -hmm. the browser it just gives you the usual like get jelly options and all that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. uh so it is like a mobile only interface yeah Let's help each other blog. Yeah, that, that's mm-hmm. about it. So uh, it is on uh, Apple and Android mm-hmm. right, right off the bat, though. Yeah, it looks mm-hmm. like. both free. So so that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, good start there. Um, but I sure you know I, mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if it'll take off. We'll see. If we're still talking about it in a month, or or you know, there'll be a tumbler of. <laughs> rashes of, of jelly <laughs> of jelly rashes jelly rashes <laughs> jelly rash dot tumbler dot com. Somebody get it. <laughs> Hurry up, hurry up. By Chilla. <laughs> that, that'd be awkward. 
Well, because then you're going to be tracing back. Oh, that you know that person has that rash. Mm-hmm. Mm, there you go. CDC's um, involved. It's an interesting idea. I, I think they're kind of they're kind of spitballing here, though. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, I think it's uh, throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but this this is the more exciting app that I, I'm a little more excited about. Mm-hmm. So, did you guys make New Year's resolutions? Sort of. Not really. I tweeted them and then I forgot them. Yes. See. And what happens is you make these New Year's resolutions. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to climb a mountain in these huge, giant res- resolutions. And then you get overwhelmed. And by this time in the month, you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm a horrible human. Why haven't I even started it? Um, this app that I really like now, it's called Little Bit. Um, what it is is you pick a habit. Like it's, It could be take a walk every day. It could be check out a new place. Mine could be uh, maybe wean myself off of Tiny Death Star but you pick these these habits and you give it, there's a timer on it. So you can pick what time of day you'd like to be reminded about this particular habit. Um, and then when it pops up, you take a photo. Here we go. Uh, complete a walk for a day. And then you take a photo of what you've done. Hmm. And essentially when you post this photo, you get encouragement from the app telling you you're doing a great job. Yay! You know, I, I love the yays. And um, if you're doing it, maybe, let's say, for example, you miss a day, like your idea is like, I'm going to walk every day and you miss a day, you lose what's called a half of a bit. And then maybe you miss two days, then you lose a full bit. The idea is to hit 21 bits. After 21 bits, it becomes a habit, kind of essentially plays off the 21 days to, to have a habit, yeah. uh, to create a habit, but it's a 21 bit. And once you hit that 20, the 21 bits, it comes back with a, you know, a whole big, um, it's a nice encouraging message. Plus they give you a list of all your pictures a slideshow. So um, it could be really neat if, as far as like, if let's say if you decided to take a walk, you took a walk and took a picture of, you know, something pretty that you walked by or something interesting. So you have a nice little slideshow again. And then you can essentially send this out to other people to, and on Twitter, or you can save it and uh, kind of show them what you're doing and kind of be, it's a really nice pumped up and it, it's an everyday thing. Cause you, I think when you had like the little encouragements along the way, I think that makes the biggest difference. And you, you realize after 21 days, you're making an impact. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a little bit. It's only on um, Apple right now on an iPhone. And it is two ninety nine. Mm-hmm. It's two ninety nine. So, mm-hmm. Which is pricey for an app. <laughs> but no, it's a good. It's a really good idea. I, I, I like it. I, I think for somebody who's really serious about you know wants to do, you know, and I'm I'm a really big believer in that habit, like that you know thirty days and you you have a habit, you know, kind of idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it sounds like it's it's something pretty cool that a lot. I'll help that along. I think it's cute. I think it's adorable <laughs> and encouraging. And I like the dog picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's actually a video here uh, for you guys on there uh, of a little bit more of the interface, too. It, mm-hmm. it looks really slick. So so when you're done, so that's nice. So, uh, you know, I, I've heard of people that do like, oh, 30 days I'm going to do this thing, and then 30 days I'm going to do this thing, like to try new things and, 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 you know, maybe eat healthier or whatever. Um, so I could see like doing this and then like now you have all this material, you can go write a blog about it. It's like, here, I did this thing mm-hmm. and here's what I encountered and, and mm-hmm. everything too. Do you know when you get the, like your picture stream, can you export it or you can link, do you just link to their site? Now I want to try to create a habit. Yeah. See, I'm yeah. sure you, I'm sure it's playing. <laughs> we'll see how it works. Yeah. They, um, I, I saw when I was playing with it, it, it is, um, you can either tweet it out or you can save it. Oh, cool. So, oh, cool. So, see, I'd like to save it. Mm-hmm. So you, you would be able to like, like here, here's mm-hmm. everything I did. So if you mm-hmm. want to just put it out that way. And so mm-hmm. it kind of like storifies your habit. Mm-hmm. So Which is I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, I am uh, downloading it right now, uh, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so got another one. Uh, so awesome. Awesome. Chilla, what do you have? So I have a couple things that build on each other. Mm-hmm. The one being, we were talking about Windows devices and Windows dual boot Android devices last week, mm-hmm. which was one of my favorite things of the week. Lenovo kind of had a late run at the the eight inch tablet market, and they released a new ThinkPad eight inch. Which, when you get a Windows eight inch device, you also get then get um, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint stu- Home and Student Edition, which I think is pretty nice. <clears throat> this is one of the first devices that they're letting you go above the two gig memory mark on an eight inch tablet. And I've heard I've I've read different specs on this. I don't know if there was a final. I, I didn't find it on their site yet, but they're, they're saying, I think, up to 16 gig on the tablet. So now you have an 8-inch tablet. You have your computer, potentially. It's not going to be a Core i5. Mm-hmm. But you have a pretty powerful device that you can tout around as an 8-inch tablet. Um, one of the other things that they've added to this that not many people are adding in 
is the uh, HDMI out and it has USB 3 ports right on it. Um, and they have like a special click um, case that's kind of looks like it's they're trying to mimic the Apple um, cases with the magnet type thing to auto shut off the screen. Um, what I was thinking about this is, and it comes in at a reasonable price point. I think it like starts at two ninety nine, or I think it starts at three ninety nine, and that's for like a thirty two gig model. Um, but you're getting you're getting a lot of expandability on that device. Mm -hmm. And then at the the same time, I was reading this life hacker put out how to install Android on your Windows 8 tablet and <laughs> dual boot it. <laughs> so not you, you don't even have to go and buy someone's Android dual boot device that also boots Windows. You can actually get this device with a, with a little extra memory for doing more stuff or because you're dual booting, it's actually shutting down the Windows side. Whatever memory you get allocated, you're going to have to carve out disk space. But you could then take and install Android on your Windows 8 tablet. Now, this is x86 hardware, so you can't put it on an RT device like an ARM processor. But I, I just look at it as this. Now, it's kind of like a do-it-yourself. Get Whatever device you have, you could pretty much dual boot. Um, the Android x86 project is doing pretty good with upkeep of Android builds. In fact, their latest, it's not, I think they, they call it like alpha, beta, and RTM. I think they they have KitKat kind of in a beta right now, so you could then take any Windows 8 tablet and have KitKat on it, and you're probably ahead of the majority of any Android person as far as what OS they have on their device. That's um, that's awesome. That 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 I mean, so so I mean, did you say we could? Can you dual boot with yeah. this? Yeah. So the, the instructions and I, I I I admit I failed on getting the. Um, flipboard out for last week, so I'm going to do tonight when I get home. I'm going to do last week's flipboard and this week's okay. flipboard. In there will be the the install instructions for how to get Android on your Windows 8 tablet. And people can uh, just look up AwesomeCast, and they'll just you you can subscribe to it from there, and yep. you'll get all that stuff, right? Yeah. So excellent. Uh, on the line of Android, um, there was a cool app. I was looking at using an Android tablet for a lot of the remote stuff around my house, especially when we have guests and things like that over. Sometimes they, they spend a prolonged period of time over there. Our, my house is kind of automated. We have the Nest, so you're controlling uh, thermostat, We the TV, all of our electronics. A lot of the lighting is all controlled through app. But I also want to throw some additional apps on there, like my Twitter feed and stuff like that. This app locker for Android actually lets you selectively lock down applications on the device. And you can actually, so I could leave the device unlocked, but like lock Gmail. So if you launch the app, it actually, you can do like a pin code or the, what do they call it on Android, where you have like the, I drag my finger around these little dots. You know, I'm talking about the, the passcode lock, but it's, you drag your finger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the the pattern lock. The pattern lock. Yeah. So so you could you can actually pattern lock at, on an app level basis, not on the device basis. You can also take it and kind of say this app can use Bluetooth, this app can't use Bluetooth. People can or can't change Bluetooth settings. I, I thought it, I thought it was a pretty cool app. Um, I'm actually thinking about building out a device leveraging this and a bunch of other apps. So thought that was pretty cool. And then did I have anything else in there? Oh, one, and I'm going to skip the last one, but the one before that, I, we talked about it after the show. Mophie came out with, and this was a late CES ad, um, <clears throat> Mophie came out with one of their um, phone packs that you put your phone inside and you can carry it around all day. You, most of their devices do, pretty much double the battery life in your phone. You had one, I think, go into I did. I did. Um, Comic-Con the one year. For the uh, 3GS. Yeah. So now, I mean, most of their devices are about in the $100 range, the $99, $99 range. For an additional $50, the space pack has more space for your device in it. So you can actually offload your camera roll. You can throw videos over there. You can use a lot of applications. And instead of chewing through space on your device, you can now put it almost on like this memory card-esque type thing. Now it is like... You Anything you access is through an app on your phone. Like, it has to go through a special thing. So th that is one of the gotchas, but because it hasn't come out yet, and no one's, I haven't seen anyone with the actual app, mm -hmm. they're saying they could use some of the APIs like WebDAV 
And if you've ever used something like uh, docs to go which allows you to use your Dropbox as a file folder, a bunch of online, your Google Drive as an online folder, you could actually potentially use this as an online, kind of like an online folder, even though it would be local storage. So it depends on how they implement the app they're leveraging and expose APIs to other people. Yeah. So you could then actually tie this space into so so app. so is this hypothetically from what you understand of the app thing is this something that I could get shoot a bunch of video and I never have enough room on my phone for video mm -hmm. I could get this thing and maybe at least record my videos and then move them over so they're out of the way you yes definitely hundred that that's a hundred and ten percent possible you can you can definitely move them over there and then watch them from that app. I think the trick is, is if you can get third party vendors, like if you look at, um, I don't know if you've ever used camera plus or you all, if you always use the stock video program versus there's a lot of other apps that allow you to really unlock yeah. additional potential, yeah. they could actually expose this hardware through the app. Okay. And allow you to, third party companies could then say, when you record video in this app, where do you want to record it to? Do you want to record it to this thing? Do you want to record it to the local device? Heck, if the internet gets fast enough, do you want to record it directly to your Dropbox? Mm. Things like that. So I could I could definitely see if they implement the application properly, uh -huh. this could really move removable media on an iPhone in a completely different direction. That's awesome. Yeah. And it does come in a... They do have a 16 gig capacity, and that's the... The base one hundred and forty nine ninety five, and then they have a thirty two gig capacity. Um, this is for the five and five S. I don't think it's for the five C. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing I think is, and I'm not sure. Um, seventeen hundred milliamps, seventeen thousand milliamps. I I can't remember. I think the actual seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred. Um, I want to say. The five has a smaller. The original five has a smaller battery than that. Okay. So you're getting a lot extra another battery. Another yeah. whole, another beyond a whole other battery oh, charge that's out awesome. of it. That's yeah. Really cool. So I know when they when they revamped and went to the five right before they went to the five C. I think the five may have gotten a spec bump. But and the device isn't that much bigger. I use I use something like this device. Obviously, it doesn't have the space built into it quite often, and it doesn't add a lot of it definitely add, doesn't add a lot of weight. It does add a little bit of thickness. But the funny part is, is if you take a five and put it next to like a four or a four S, you're back up to that thickness. So if you're if you're coming, if you're used to the iPhone, the older iPhones and you add this thing on there, you're not. No difference yeah, <laughs> you, you're, you, you don't remember. And I can see this as being a, a some of the time thing. You too. Yeah. Is that, that you know, I, mean, I, I take mine on and off all the time. Yeah. So yeah, I could definitely see, mm -hmm. and they and they show the one thing uh, like gallery. It, it actually takes the content on the device and and puts it into a pie chart. Gal like there's a uh, photo gallery, movies, music, documents, and other. The other interesting thing it'll be is if this app can actually mimic almost like an SD card type thing. So when if you have this app open and you plug the device into your PC, can I now get to this device? as a removable, almost like a USB thumb drive mm -hmm. type thing. Awesome. And I think that's all the awesomeness I have for the week. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot Great. of awesome. <clears throat> well, I have a pretty big one. Um, this is a little bit of a crossover. We'll, of course, be talking about the other side of this later on tonight at the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, but there was, I think, uh, you know, CES, there's a lot of big announcements. Um, there's a lot of media plays, of course, going on lately. Uh, you're hearing announcements from Intel, Sony, uh, stuff like that. Everybody's talking 4K, Netflix is everywhere. But this is a surprise. Uh, WWE had an announcement in Las Vegas on Wednesday night. And it's funny, because I heard about this announcement like two weeks in advance, and it never dawned on me that they were doing the announcement at CES. It was a mystery announcement. Mm -hmm. It kind of broke that it was going to be this. This is something that's been coming for a while. So they're doing um, um, the WWE Network. This is going to be a complete over-the-top, as in not on cable, completely on the internet, um, service for WWE content, wrestling content. 
$9.99 a month, right off the bat, they're including all 12 of their pay-per-views. Now, for those not familiar, those pay-per-views start, start at $45 a piece. Wow. Start. You can pay as much as $65 to $70, depending on the event, the carrier, and the type of feed you get. SD, like, like you start with an SD feed at $45. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, and I know I, I heard, I think, what, they have an agreement. Direct TV is direct, direct TV TV's is pissed. pissed. Yeah. Well, okay, so right <laughs> well, let, me get, let me get through the rest of the service first. So, so you have that, right? Not only that, it's going to include every past pay-per-view that the WWE slash WWF has done, ECW, WCW, remember they own all those old catalogs from their competitors from back in the day, uh, a bunch of other classic stuff. They're going to do original content, including Legends House, which is a reality show with... WWE legends like Rowdy Roddy Piper. Uh, looks like Howard Finkel is going to be in there. I think the Iron Sheik's part of it. Actually, they're showing a little bit here <laughs> in the video. Um, it's it looks ridiculous, and I think it's worth ten bucks on its own uh, with mm -hmm. this. And here I'll throw a little footage up. There's uh, Hacksaw Jim Tuck is in a Mean Gene <laughs> Okerlin, uh, Pat Patterson. Uh, it, 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 that alone looks like it's worth you know ten bucks a month, and they're going to have a bunch of other stuff. WrestleMania rewinds. Uh, they're gonna have this countdown show, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's gonna go to basically any device you can think of. Uh, right off the bat, they're saying it's gonna be on PlayStation Three and Four, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, Xbox One is coming in the summer. That's interesting, but it seems like a lot of stuff's getting delayed on there. Mm -hmm. uh, Kindle Fire, Roku, tablets, mobile devices. So iPhone, uh, I'm sorry, iOS, Android devices have been uh, uh, mentioned already. And I think they have a list right here of uh, other, other other devices. So basically, anywhere you can think of, anything you would want to get this, uh, for the most part, it's going to be available or will be eventually. Um, there, I, I, sorry, I, I heard that there there is a minimum what you have to order six months. You have <laughs> to sign up for a six month agreement. And see, I think that's the right way to. Uh, if you're serious so, about so it, so you buy a pay per view. Which you, the first pay per view is WrestleMania. Whatever money, I can't think of the last time WrestleMania was less than sixty-five dollars. Okay. Even for the SD version, mm -hmm. um, if you pay, if you're going to buy WrestleMania, go put that aside and pay ten bucks a month the next six months because holy crap! Um, it just if you are a wrestling fan, this just blows that out of the water. I was tweeting during the thing. Basically, uh, the pay per view industry was built on WWE, WWF with WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. um, and now I think WWE is going to kill it. Well, and I'm hoping that this pushes companies like HBO and and different different people to actually allow that. Just subscribe to our our service mm -hmm. right over over our our terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Also, think this is this is the content provider themselves saying, you know, <laughs> saying saying here, you know, we want to provide that content to you. Directly, mm -hmm. um, they say uh, they're if they can get eight hundred thousand uh, users by the end of the year, they'll break even. It's not. That's not that many. That's mm -mm. not that many. Mm -mm. Considering how many they think they said three to four million people watch Raw every Monday night, versus other people, you know, and, and then at the end of the year they go international. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's going to piss off the pay per view companies. Obviously, DirecTV already says that. Hey. We're probably going to pull you. You're diminishing your numbers anyways. And it's like, but it's you're still making how much money off of these guys, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and that's what Vince McMahon, I think, has come back and said, and said, well, okay, if you don't want to make money, then that's fine. You know, uh, WWE's really taking this and becoming the master of where they're going to go here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're setting out their own future. And they're really, I think, doing the fans a service in this. And by saying, here, 10 bucks a month, do mm -hmm. this. Um, I can't think of too many people that are like, aren't like, Yes, I'll do that. You know, um, I mean, you have to figure how many people um, go are are not near a TV that are watching different shows like Raw on their computers, looking for these links that are you know not the right way to do it necessarily. YouTube, but yeah. finding these shows in heck for ten bucks, you're going to get a nice link. I mean, it's going to be a solid picture. You can watch it wherever you're at, and so you're pulling in all these people who've maybe not been you know searching for this content and just going and now reasonably paying for it, you know, mm -hmm. a reasonable amount for it. And you're, that's a whole other audience that they're not even accounting for or they can't account for because they're watching it that way. And I think, I think you could see that they were sparing with this. I talked about that. Uh, I threw some old, some of my old WWF pay-per-views up mm -hmm. on, on a YouTube channel just to see what would happen. And they just, 
content idea. They're running ads. So I, I really think they're looking at this and they saw how many people were watching their stuff on Hulu because they had to deal with Hulu for the longest time. All their major shows are over there and some of the lesser ones. Um, seeing how many people are buying the pay-per-views online, seeing how many people watch that kind of stuff on YouTube. You know, they don't pull it. You can go find just about anything on YouTube as far as WWE, F, mm -hmm. anything else that they own. Um, which is tremendous as far as that goes. You can go and just be in a hole in Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior promos for the <laughs> evening, right? Um, but And they're making money off of it. They're getting the ads off of it. They're just like, yeah, go ahead. You even see they're putting their own uh, full matches on their YouTube channel for the longest mm -hmm. time here. I think they're starting to do that a little bit less now that they have this coming mm -hmm. up. You're going to see that little bit of a transition there. Um, but they got the numbers. This thing, how long have they been working on this portion of it to say, hey, we're going to do this online in this manner? Six months. They've been talking about WWE Network for, what, two years? Mm -hmm. It was originally supposed to be a cable network. Um, the one report was saying that Vince was saying that um, um, they actually have a deal that they could sign today with cable companies, but they decided not to do it. Well, I think when you give people a, a, a option that is that makes sense for them... I, I think about it. If they probably went to the cable companies, it's not going to be ten dollars a month. You're, it's probably going to be a fifteen dollar a month or a twenty dollar well, a month. Is it? And it's not even going to be as much stuff. And, right. You know what is it? Now, now I'm tied to the cable companies. Now it's like, well, it was it. Is it on my FiOS? Is it on my Comcast? Is it on my Armstrong cable? You know? When I'm guessing, this is more of an on-demand thing too. Mm -hmm. On the in-between, mm -hmm. I can watch. It's well, it's it's it is on demand. I can go back and watch all those old pay-per-views and everything. Right. They're going to make. They're going to add more stuff too. Um, they have one show that's going to be about the Monday Night War. It's going to be probably old episodes of, of Raw and SmackDown. They also cut out their cable subscription. On demand 24-7. Mad Mike has been on the show is pissed because he, he's had that for the longest time. And he watches the old, you know, Raw, ECW, Monday Nitros, um, and loves all the programming on that. He's mad because he doesn't have that. But now he has this as an option, mm -hmm. too. Um, and, and, and now I think some people are saying, you know, some people are worried our pay-per-view is going to go away. Some people can't get this. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you know, some people in some places they have, uh, like, I keep thinking back to like, you know, my dad's place. If it doesn't come over a satellite dish, it is not mm -hmm. coming in any adequate fashion whatsoever. You know, um, so, so they will block out a lot of people. But I think if you already, if you're able to watch the, the announcement on a stream on Wednesday night, you're already in the audience, mm -hmm. but if you're, but if you're, like, let's use your dad's house for an, for instance. You can run Netflix there, right? Or no? Um, I have not tested it with his satellite internet that he's installed. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the bandwidth limits hardcore with those things. Okay, when you have them installed, like like 500 megabytes a day, I've seen. I haven't looked at it for a couple years. But I remember that used to be an issue. Well, that's one of the things I, that, that I'm getting nervous about, too, is that I think you're seeing, and it doesn't, it, it sounds like a lot, 250 gig caps on, like, Comcast and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Not that you necessarily get in trouble, but you're going to get warned, and then they're going to want to raise your rate and, and a bunch of other stuff. You have all these people going to the, the Netflix route and mm -hmm. all these other routes. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's why I chose Fios, because there is, I was told there is no cap. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just looking at, like, um, was it Call of Duty Ghosts is a 38 gig download. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, and that's in like, I'm, I'm downloading that. And let's just say you're a person that buys two games a, a, a month. Okay. Now you're at, now you're at almost 80 gigs just in your two <laughs> game downloads. Mm -hmm. And then you're Netflixing everything. I'm worried that, that, that the, Cable companies are going to really start to ratchet down, mm -hmm. whether it's cable or FiOS or whoever your internet service provider is, ratchet down on that bandwidth. Hey, I think this is this is a, this is a conversation mm -hmm. that's happening a lot right now. Uh, we're talking about uh, like some of the, some of the programs are talking about how uh, providers want to make agreements to pay for the other side of the bandwidth so that mm -hmm. we don't have to, but then they sponsor it. But then what happens to my data that's done along that? And that's the whole net, net neutrality, anti-net neutrality. Mm -hmm. It gets complicated. I don't want to get into too much of that here. Uh, right right now, we just got to presume we're, we're just riding the, our data is going to be okay <laughs> and we're not going to do anything weird about us. Because the moment they do, because I think anybody that hits that cap, if they're in a Fios area, if they have an alternative, they will go to the alternative. Mm -hmm. I wonder. I wonder if anybody in this, in a FiOS area like this neighborhood is hits that cap and they say, "Oh, blah blah, you hit your cap." I'm like, "Oh, well, I could, well, FiOS keeps sending me flyers. Do they have a cap? What happens yeah. then? What happens to your cap now? How's your cap now, Comcast?" <laughs> um, I think that 
that becomes an issue too. Now, when you're like, I have Comcast, I have no options, that or crappy DSL, you have no option. DSL, I bet you DSL, you could stream something like this. I mean, DSL... DSL's gotten better, I know. Min, mm -hmm. Minimum on that's a 768K line. Mm -hmm. And you're talking burst speed at like 3 meg. Mm -hmm. I mean, 3 meg, you can definitely get I think you can get it at a one and a half to two. Streaming if you video. can get that like SD stream mm -hmm. option with uh, with Netflix, you might be okay with that. So, um, but no, I think this is going to be big. This uh, uh, worried about you know if you're worried about how it's going to run because they're going to open it up after RAW on February twenty fourth. <laughs> you can sign up that morning. A um, little worried about that because they did a, a, a streaming on Xbox and devices like I think it was this past year, and it didn't go well. Like people didn't see the first hour of it of that sixty-five dollar oh. pay-per-view. Um, but this is actually being backed up. The MLB AM, which is the tech wing of the MLB network, okay. actually, like the guy, guy from MLB AM came out and said, "said Hey, we're supporting this." Da 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 da. So there's a platform already there. It's not like WWE went out and built this thing. Mm -hmm. They are. I think they're pretty much plugging into an infrastructure that's already built, which okay. I think is is smart. Because what does WWE know about tech? You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. they screwed up social media a couple of times <laughs> in, in the long run. They was had it? a Windows Media Player for the longest time on their site, like way after they should. Oh have. wow! It was it was it was bad. Wasn't well, um? Aren't they streaming the Super Bowl this year? You don't have to have a provider or but as long are as you have internet. No, are, well, that, that's the other thing. The play, well, the playoffs have been depending on the carrier, because mm -hmm. Fox, I think you still had to have a cable provider, and the other okay. ones were mm -hmm. fine. But I thought the NFL was actually going to do its own feed. And I think you're going to start seeing the NFL more and more doing their own thing like that and See, sitting, getting in front of that. I think this is going to be a waterfall effect. I think I think they're going to prove that that you can do it. Mm hmm. And then you're going to see all these other companies. And you're you're going to get the a la carte. Everyone's going to get the a la carte cable that they always wanted. The difference is you're not going to have a cable box. You're going to have some That's, kind of. There's like two other shows I listened to yeah. this week about core cutting that said the exact same thing. Uh, yeah, it is. It, this is. And I'm looking at it and we're looking at it like, okay, we, we pay for this so we can get this block of content. We can pay for this for this block of content. You know, and, and it builds up, and I'm like, well, am I still paying more than I did for cable? I'm cool, and I'm well, actually watching this stuff. It's funny because I actually reversed the cord cut. I went back, but here's the bad. Here's the funny part, okay? And and this is where I, this is where I think it's going to get really interesting. So, for my internet, I was on an extremely slow FiOS line. I knew I needed to upgrade. Mm -hmm. I was on a fifth. I think it was like fifteen five. And okay. it was, it was well, that's so slow. It was getting, <laughs> it was, it was getting, it was actually getting bogged down mm. because I think I, I think when we last counted, I had like 40 devices, internet connected. I got, I got, I got to say though, um, one thing I've noticed with Fios, you need to reboot that modem. Every, mm -hmm. If you call them, they will step you through that Yeah, and they will clear something on their end. And like every time they do that. Well, the thing is, is if I, if I, when I powered everything up, like here, if I power everything down and ran a bandwidth test. Mm -hmm. I'd be getting straight 15. Mm -hmm. I'd power everything up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the bandwidth test. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was obvious I was hitting my allotted bandwidth. So I called them and I said, hey, I noticed you're you're already billing me like five dollars more than you used to be. And they said, yeah, because your your contract's out. And I'm like, OK, I think they just did that to me, too. <clears throat> and I said, and I noticed uh, I have a little banner on my bill page that says you're going to raise my rate by eight dollars and they said yeah it's because we're trying to get rid of your plan and i'm like okay <laughs> so i'm like what are we talking do this or what are we talking here and so it pretty much came down to the fact that for 15 more dollars a month i could go from 15.5 to 75.50 Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Are those real internet numbers? So, at this point? So I'm like, okay. And he goes, but to get that, you're going to have to bundle in cable. And I'm like, well, what happens if I don't bundle in cable? And he goes, then it's going to be $25 more. And I'm like, okay, bundle in cable. 
Which is, so the story gets really awkward because so I saved ten dollars by bundling it, but now I have cable, and then I'm like, well, what does that include? And he goes, well, we can actually throw in Showtime and, and HBO <laughs> yeah. for an additional ten dollars combined. I'm like, okay, so now I'm, I'm I'm like right at the peak of what I'm willing to spend, and then and then I find out the company I work for, if you have a double play. You get five dollars off a month, or if you have a triple play, you have t- you get ten dollars off a month. So now I'm actually, I, but you can't with if you only have a single service. So now I'm knocking five dollars more off, and I already have my own DVR. So it's bring your own DVR. They sent me a little cable card in the mail that I throw in the back of the DVR that we already had, mm-hmm. and now I have cable. It's it's mm-hmm. magic, Jeez. and it's cheaper than if I just wanted internet. So you just got that's like, the free kicker. TV. That's a, but but the how long do you have that? It has to be a contract, right? It is a contract. It's so a two, it's a two year contract. Two years. So you so wait. So you don't have to touch it for two years. I don't have to touch it for two years. And you got you got TV basically for free at this point. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Um, which I also wonder because I wonder if I find myself. I'm I'm, I'm sure if I call, I'm going to find myself in the same situation. Um, because I'm noticed, I'm looking at the bill. It just says this is your service thing. There's no, I see no notification. Right. It just says this is what you paid last month. This is what we want you to pay this month. And there's nothing about why that is. Why? Um, so I call and they talk me into something. I got you. So 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 now I wonder because have you looked into their digital offerings? Have you hooked it up to your Xbox or anything like that? So so Does here's it the have thing. Like an Xfinity kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, so so we have the we have that one DVR in the in the one room, and it was mainly to to record over the air antenna stuff. Yeah. Well, now I'm still. It's funny because over the air is actually clearer can, than cable. Can, can, so. I, can I do? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. I was thinking about that today actually because they were talking about Aereo, and I'm like, you know, if I get cable again for some reason like this, I will probably still watch my football over the air. Right. Because so I still record my shows over the air because they're clearer. Um, but they're like, well, don't don't you want a DVR for another room? And I'm like, no. And they're like, well, don't you want just a, just the, the decoder box for one of your other TVs? I'm like, no. Like, I could tell, like, the guy's, like, trying to get me to tack on <laughs> their devices because those are monthly fees. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My cable card is, like, four ninety nine a month. It's a monthly fee for the cable card. Five bucks. How which much? is my discount, my corporate discount. So I'm so like, yeah, okay, it's free. free. So you're free. <laughs> so, so let me, so how much are you, how much more are you paying than you were before for all this stuff? Fifth, well... About twenty five, mm-hmm. but it was gonna go up eight no matter what, so I'm counting it as a fifteen. Okay, all right. So it's about fifteen dollars more a month, but then but then I get the five dollars off, the so I'm down You're to playing ten. Playing the game, man. You're but if I but the trick is if I would have just gone internet, it would have been ten dollars more than what I'm paying now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the kicker. It would have been more for me to get just internet. It's so bad that TV has to be free in and order for us to take it. So, mm-hmm. so I told, I, I said, he goes, well, what are you going to use in your other rooms? I'm like, I got three Xboxes. Mm-hmm. And I said, and I got two tablets. Yeah, don't they, don't the they stream their channels to the Xbox? You get 77 channels with their Xbox app or an iPad or iPad, Android, any mm-hmm. kind of device like oh, that. You're about talking me into <laughs> hooking back up. Oh, damn it. <laughs> now, you'll have to call and see. But but the kicker was, I, I said, I can't believe that it is less expensive for me to get cable with I, my internet. I think that's an act of desperation. to have my internet. That's an act of desperation at that point, yeah. isn't it? And, and I'll be honest with you. Like I, Now I have to go through and favorite channels because there's too many channels again. I was used to just having my, my 25 channels. And life was good. I don't think, you know, honestly, I don't think much. I think if, if that happened to me, all I would do maybe is cancel Hulu. And now I can watch Raw the right way. Um, and that's probably about it. We'll DVR the stuff that we Hulued and bought on Amazon, and, mm-hmm. and that would be it. Well, know? that's the other thing. So I was thinking, too, because I was paying it's for. It's interchangeable in yeah, the long run. I was paying for um, Walking Dead and a couple other TV shows because I was trying to do it the legit way. Mm -hmm. And when I factored those in, it was like, this, Mm -hmm. this is a no brainer. Mm -hmm. It's why, why am I doing this to myself? They got you back. They got you back. Yeah. But the interesting thing too, is, is they say they, when you say on the phone, like, okay, I well, what happens if I don't want to pay for HBO and Showtime as part of that package anymore? They're like, you can cancel those at any time. 
They said you can you can cancel all your cable all the way down to the base mm-hmm. and send in your tuner card and get go all the way back down to the base, which is still going to be cheaper than if I had just internet. <laughs> so it, it yeah, it's pretty much they're bundling cable in for free. Actually <laughs> negative. They're paying you to get cable now. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, now I think that deal does run out the 18th. And if you're willing to bundle, here's the kicker too. If you're willing to bundle in phone at no additional cost, <laughs> they will what give. What do we need a phone for? But here's the funny part: if you're willing to bundle phone at no additional cost, they will send you a three hundred dollar gift card, Visa gift card. <laughs> <laughs> we'll buy a lot of stuff on Amazon for that. Yeah, it's 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 funny because like you can tell they're just they're it's it's almost like they're trying to keep the metrics of cable well, subscribers and phone and subscribers. And they're also out. and they're also playing the long game that in two years you're going to forget about that mm-hmm. and pay the full price. Because I, I I bet you a good percentage of people. That's what's going on. You know, and Kraus is really good at this, too. If you talk to Kraus about that two-year mark, because you do get kind of a, a warning notification, mm-hmm. he is is a little more... Uh, I'm impressed with what he does. When he gets that notification, he calls them and says, okay, what are you going to do to keep me? Yeah. That's the question he there, asked. There's a, no, no, this, is, this is fun. There, there's actually... Uh, uh, it used to be frame right now. They're cord killers. Um... um uh, they just started the, the new the new show under a different banner. Um, they actually have a chicken challenge where they say, "Okay, so you have cable. Call your cable company, tell them you're leaving, and see how low they will go." Because at this point, were you were you like kind of given resistance? Were you like, "Oh, I don't know if I really want TV like the whole time." Yeah, was, was that what's going on? And, and then, so they kept, "Well, we'll give you this. We'll give you this." We'll yeah, give you and this. that's what happened. And I was like. Now it's not making sense for me to not do this. Yeah. It, it was almost to the point... Well, it actually made more sense for me to say, okay, I will take your cable. And when they ship the cable card, throw it in a box in the corner and not set anything up. Yeah. Because he even said that about And I didn't even want to go down the phone route because then I got to swap out my modem and they were actually going to disconnect the modem I have. Because it's a different modem device that has mm-hmm. phone line I'm in it. I get the updated one because I really need like wireless N, and apparently I got to buy a new one. See, I don't use it. the wireless in that. I have two of the Apple mm-hmm. routers, so I actually have to shut Wi-Fi off on mine mm-hmm. and use the the other equipment. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not going through tearing out all of the wireless network and the wired network so I could put a device in that I don't want because it has a phone line. But it would have given me a three hundred dollar gift card. <laughs> but even at that point in time, it wasn't oh, worth it to me. It's three hundred dollars. <laughs> That's amazing. But yeah, I, I, I just it, it, it's. I, I think they're just trying to boost metrics to say, look, we have this these subscribers, mm-hmm. and it's they're going to the H. I think they're going to the HBOs of the world and say, look, if you go off on your own, we're not going to give you the free advertising and look how many people we advertise to. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, how, and I'd be interested to know how many of their phone people don't have a phone hooked up. Because that's the first thing the guy said. He goes, I said, I don't even have a handset to plug into it. He goes, then don't plug it in. Yeah. Like, he completely did not care. We have one behind mm-hmm. the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It works. It would have been like, we, back when we had no other phones hooked up and it would just ring while we were recording down here. We're just like... <laughs> Okay, sure. <laughs> so it's so it's actually cheap. I can't believe it. It's cheaper to get mm-hmm. cable than to not get cable. I can tell you, Xfinity's not much different. Really? Yeah, they, they they do a similar thing with the. You're like, I don't need the. I don't watch these channels. Oh, but you. It's cheaper if you take them. And I'm like, but, yeah. yeah. I, why? Mm-hmm. What are they? What are they doing? Who's paying them? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, take loss. All, all the grannies that have had Verizon and. Uh, and Comcast for 20 years that are paying full price and take the whole thing and just pay it yeah. and mm-hmm. don't call back and, and question mm-hmm. it, um, that they are subsidizing you that's working the system. It's ridiculous. You're a horrible human being. <laughs> I'm, I'm causing you, people to probably go on welfare. 
<laughs> you know why you need a home phone is because whenever you fill something out and they want a phone number, you go, okay, call my home phone. That's what a Google Voice is for. Oh, you can ask it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just giving you options for your home and phone. And you can set, uh, you can block, you can block numbers on that too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize you could block numbers on uh, the iPhone too. Like they added yeah, that the last couple of days, didn't they? Because I have uh, an insurance company calling me that I belong to. That was weird. Mm. Um, you can actually block caller ID right from the phone now too. Yeah, under one of the settings that's been there for, for and Android quite just, some just time. added a lot of that kind of mm-hmm. stuff too. That's that's cool. It's it's it, it's moving into that. So, wow, we didn't get the half the stuff we have here. <laughs> All right, um, um, what what is there anything in here you guys want to touch on before we get out? Of here? Uh, Super Bowl is streamed. It is streamed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no NFC on Fox online but the super bowl is streamed and then with wwe tv uh what about chromecast um the word was Mm -hmm. i found a tweet thank you (laughs) thank you um there was a tweet from at steinerberg steiner steinberg whatever uh will work on chromecast apparently wwe was giving away chromecast at the event so they have not said anything about it yet but it's really not much they're putting out these new apps and Mm -hmm. i think for the most part these are going to be updated versions of the current wwe apps i feel like that's going to be the case Mm -hmm. Uh, i think at certain points they say you just log into the wwe app with your account and everything will be available so that thing if you're watching raw and they say go to the app and there's stuff they put videos up and stuff that was just priming you for this Again, another mm-hmm. thing. How many people have downloaded that app? It's like, okay, here's a bunch of people that can access this network uh, and that can watch these videos. Um, it was another test for them. I, I really think that's going to be a big game changer. If these guys are successful for this, you're right. You're going to see, I mean, NFL has already been pushing towards this. Mm-hmm. They're supposedly talking to Apple and Google or mm-hmm. something, right? Um, well, because Sunday tickets up. And everybody I think... everybody <laughs> wants, uh, there's an NHL network, there's an NFL network, there's mm-hmm. MLB, there's Game Center online. This is opening up. You have uh, legis- uh, FCC's coming out, and, and they were going to try to relax the blackout rules, mm-hmm. you know, um, which I think that blocks. Like, we can't get Penguins games if we want to get Game Center, right? I think you can based on the fact that it's sold out. Yeah. If, if it's sold out, you can? Yeah, which, fortunately, that's the same thing like with Steelers. Little, yeah. Like, with the st- if the Steelers weren't sold out, mm-hmm. I think it would have been, it would be blacked out. In our because area. there was talks of the playoff games in certain mm-hmm. cities being blacked out just for the sheer fact that they were not getting the tickets. They were not selling the tickets. So I think they should be. Oh, then that's the thing where they came out and found out that the local networks were actually buying the remaining tickets to sell it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> with days left to make sure it would go yeah, out. Yeah, Because they would be losing money for yeah. them. Mm-hmm. That's, that's crazy mm-hmm. um, that they, they would have to do some of that. So, so you can see this giant chunk of seats in the sold-out stadium. <laughs> yeah. That'd be interesting. Um, I, yeah, I, th- I think this is a big changer. And, and, and yeah, it, I'm, I'm really curious. So let me know how that cable thing goes for you there, Chilla. <laughs> uh, well, I, it, so far, so good. Uh, Fios was really Fios is always really nice, and, and even mm-hmm. when I when I left, I said the same. I said the dish. I said the dish network when I left them for Fios. I said it to Fios. I was like, I'm not, no problem with your TV. I just don't want cable anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I just want to do this other thing. I don't want your thing, um, and that's it. So it was the nicest breakup ever, mm-hmm. in both cases. Comcast. Get the- out of my house. Um, so what do you? What do you? That's for that was for Spoon's kids. Um, <laughs> so what do you think about Google letting you email Google Plus people? I don't yeah. know. Mm-hmm. I mean, am, am I? I won't care about it until I start seeing spam from it. Mm-hmm. Like I wonder how many like big tech editors and people that are posting out there are all of a sudden getting. Mm-hmm. Nailed. Now they now they do. Say, they did. There's a way to shut it off. Yeah, they, they said if you're a high-profile user, mm-hmm. a verified. However, um, they will give you some more options to manage that. Mm-hmm. So the rest of us are just thrown to the wolves on this thing. Um, hey, I have forty-five thousand emails unread in my Gmail <laughs> inbox. I think I'm important. <laughs> I think I just. I think I just hit finally hit forty-five thousand today. I mean, it was forty. I've been doing a good job of clearing. Oh, stuff. I don't. I keep everything. I, mean, I have a new. Oh, I, just I added. Well. I added <laughs> everything to a bacon folder, and I go through that, and I delete, and and, and all that kind of stuff. Forty-four thousand one hundred and eleven <laughs> <laughs> unread. Unread. That's not including the red ones. That's one unread. day, one day, you're gonna be on vacation, just reading through emails, flipping through. <laughs> oh, see how it's done. Yes. See, see, Google Plus freaked me out the first the first round of Google Plus. Um, 
when it first came out, freaked me out the day that people in my circle, when their phone number showed up in my contacts. And that was the first time I got, it was like, just, I don't want to. You know, you know, uh, uh, that happens with me since Facebook does the same thing on, yeah. on the iPhone. And I'm like, how do I have this person in here? And mm-hmm. it's like, why do I have this person in here? Um, I, people had added me in circles that I have never even could. It was random and strangers. And it sent you the, the contact? Yeah, I had their phone numbers. And I'm like, do they have mine? Wait a minute, I have a Google-based phone. Of course they have mine. You know, you just start getting all this, like, just going on further and further. And you're like, they have my information. It's it's here. And and, and I used, think they cleaned, cleared that up. But it's like the email thing. Of the level. I used that on to find people's phone numbers on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Facebook originally, you could put your phone number in, mm-hmm. and then your friends could see what your phone number was. Mm-hmm. And I was I was trying to meet someone for almost like a tweet up meet up type thing, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I don't know how to find this person. Wasn't a Craigslist meetup? Oh uh, no. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm friends with him on Facebook. I wonder if he put his phone number into Facebook, and I, lo and behold, I could call him through the Facebook contact. Now this is like I O eons ago, but <laughs> oh, and this just in. Um, Chrome 32 is out for Windows. Every time I hear about an update to Chrome, it jumps five versions, I swear. And they're putting in the desktop piece. Oh. You know, they, we, you already, wait, the full desktop thing, or? Oh, yeah, Chrome's new interface for Windows 8 Metro mode also takes a cue from Chrome OS with its desktop launcher for Chrome web apps. Because I've seen a little bit, like, like, um, if anybody's installed like the, the Hangout app now, it, it's a, you get the little green button. Actually, get, I can show a little bit here. Maybe, maybe this will update. <laughs> now I, this, no. thing's, this thing can, seems to be. I thought it was super powerful. No, no, it was. It's a 2007 iMac. Oh, That's okay. the problem. Um, it's like uh, you can get. I don't think I can see this in the corner here, but there's a little um, um, Hangout icon you can get, and you see it pulls up. Mm-hmm. Your hangout chat here, mm-hmm. and then you can do everything from here. So this is actually how I've been calling people. And here is I'll actually call them from this without opening up the rest of Chrome. Of course, Chrome is obviously running in the background for this. Uh, it's been kind of nice. Um, not too great when I operate in full screen mode on my Mac all the time, um, but here I, I'm loving it here because I'm looking at uh, on this side. I have Hangouts chats that are popping up on all these machines mm-hmm. you know i have had to mute them here for the studio and all that kind of stuff but now this is helping the communication for us as far as like doing doing these shows and everything i realized i didn't hit the button there hey there's a video of me there's not you the search results around. i was looking at yeah all of these <laughs> like i'm looking at boom 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 so um it's kind of nice like like that's the way if you're trying to get a hold of me here during the studio time probably hang out oh, well, they're the doing way. a lot of so. stuff in it so they have They'll show you an icon on the tab when that then when that tab is streaming audio. Audio. They already did video before. Yeah, they have a video. I think that's the video screen. Or if it's or Wait. if it's or if it's Chromecasting, if the tab is Chromecasted, mm-hmm. that it's Chromecasting. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, here, here's a little picture. Uh, guys mm-hmm. in video, like casting your TV has this this mm-hmm. thing. Uh, we got an orange one here for uh, using a webcam. Uh, that's good because a lot of times I know. Like, I'll be in a hangout and going through and doing other stuff for the shows on Monday night while I'm watching Raw. And so it's nice to, you know, go back and see, okay, this is the one that you guys are working from. Um, That's cool. So, yeah, and if you scroll to the bottom of that page, they show the the new interface, the new Chrome interface for Windows 8. So is it this one here? Scroll scroll all the way to the bottom. You're reading the same article. Oh, so you can pull this up. Yeah, that's like... that's so so. And this is this is for Windows eight specifically, or is this the one that is going to be compatible back to like eight? Or I'm sorry, XP. This says for right now it's Windows eight Metro mode. Okay, but this is this is going to roll back to XP, isn't it? I think so. So it, it's that idea that we can take our old XP machines, got a couple here, um, and say, well, okay, we don't need a computer. Here's like a Chromebook now. Right. So, and, and you don't have to worry about, as long as you do everything in Chrome, which is something I'm trying to instill in my grandfather, as long as you do everything in Chrome, <laughs> you'll be okay, you'll be safe. Here's my problem with Chrome, and tell me, I don't know if this happens to you. If I leave Chrome running on a laptop, and I come back to my laptop, and I'm Chrome's doing nothing. The laptop is pretty much, the display is asleep, the drive isn't asleep. I come back, I have 10% battery life. 
<laughs> if I remember to close Chrome before walking away from that laptop, I come back and it's 97%. Hmm. This like, is Chrome it is, is a pig. It, 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 well, I, I, I'm running on, I have no battery left in my 2009 MacBook, so I can't even compare. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, I think you do, I think it goes dead in five minutes anyways. Um, but, yeah, no, that's been a problem with it forever. Right. Like, they need to fix that. Yeah. Like, that's the that's the one thing. Yeah. Uh, apps using significant energy, one, Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what are you doing on my machine? Are they indexing my entire hard drive? You know, I, I was trying to figure out, because I opened up, uh, I had restarted this computer, this new computer, the Windows 8 computer. I pulled up the tasks, and I'm, I want to see, like, what kind of CPU I'm running here and everything. And I go into, like, uh, uh, what, what did I go in here? Maybe I went into app history. No, that wasn't it. No, I went into details, and I don't have any Chrome running at all. But it's showing me about... 20 processes for Chrome running right now. It's like it's taken over my computer. Uh, and this is the Windows 8 machine. So, And I mean, obviously they figured out how to do it through their own OS that they're getting decent battery life on and not killing yeah, the processor. Yeah. But, but you so, think they, all they're doing is taking the Chrome and slapping it on a Linux layer. Right? But I get better battery life on a Chromebook running just Chrome than I do something else that has more battery life in general <laughs> when I run Chrome. There's something... Uh, I don't know. They just... They're not... And this is, goes back to my if complaint. If they can't build to the metal, it's not going to work, which is weird. It's just a browser. Right. It's a... Br- exactly. It's... What I what is it doing? I mean, here, I have... I have Chrome, iTunes, Firefox, the App Store, and Finder open. Now, maybe Apple probably doesn't report that if something's using significant battery that's their own, but Firefox doesn't show up there. I mean, it's it, it it's a little overkill. That's all I'm saying. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Tell us, Google. Tell us. <laughs> Um, well, you had your glass to ask. Yeah, my glass. Oh, well, I don't have my glass right now. I know. My glass is That's, on its way know. to or from California. We would uh, know. Yeah, I put it in the box uh, there Thursday or Thurs- Thursday, Friday, actually. So, uh, yeah, we'll have the glass too here soonish, I guess. Soonish? Soonish. I think it takes about a week. So, uh, yeah, maybe I'll get it by the end of the week here. So, I'm looking Then we can it. ask it, Google, what are you doing? Then I can wink and take pictures. Oh. So I don't have to do this like, I need to take pictures for the podcast post thing like this. I can just be like, eh, eh. I, I don't even know how that's going to work. I, I, I just know I want to just accidentally take a crap load of pictures. And I'm already taking enough pictures of myself upside down when I sit down on a desk. So. Spoon just said that Foursquare used to broadcast phone numbers also. Yeah. Well, a lot of them have gotten Did Bright Kite do that? I think. I miss Bright Kite. <laughs> I remember Bright Kite. I remember, uh-huh. I remember using text for Bright Kite because I had a flip phone or something <laughs> uh, like at the time. And was, I, I tried. I ran the Twitter thing where you can put your phone number in and it allows you to use it as an additional auth point. Mm-hmm. Well, then all of a sudden, <clears throat> every mention and favorite, and now I'm getting texted with this information. So now I'm getting a text. I'm getting... And an, a notification on my phone for the text for the Twitter app, and it's coming. Both of them are coming through to my watch. Oh boy! So, oh, I'm like, how do I shut this off? <laughs> Tweet you a lot. Then. You can't shoot. You can't shut it off in the app. You have to go to the website, and I couldn't even figure out. How, on the website, it told me that it was off for that phone number. The only thing the phone number would be used for was authentication. But. I'm like, speaking get of, rid of my phone number. Speaking of automated, going, uh, you're the person that asked. You, might, you talked about home automation a little bit earlier. I did want to talk about this. Um, Google is buying uh, Nest for $3.2 billion. I definitely want your opinion on this one. See, I, I see a lot of you people are, you're using going Nest. crazy over it. I think it's a great thing. I think you're here. And here's my here's my reason why. So the Nest, the guys that did Nest were, I think, one of the original guys that did one of the first iPods. Yeah, he was one of the designers, designers. on it, or project manager. Yeah. Like, he didn't design the thing. They clarified right. that. But but I, I think you're going to – I'm hoping – I see Google going after these companies that have intellectual people that work for them that know how to design. 
and know what good design is. It, it, well, it, and also Google for the longest time has been very supportive of cool ideas. Mm -hmm. Like, like they they are like the scary company that says we can do whatever we want, and thankfully they want to do cool things. Yeah, you know that we're kind of like, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's the future. Yeah, that's going to get us to Star Trek sooner. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and I think this is one of those things. Um, now, now Google Venture apparently has been involved with them for a while, so a this isn't time. like a new relationship. But I don't think if you're a Google, if Google gives you Google Venture, I don't think it makes you a Google property that then no. Google can then later take control of. No, 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 no. But I mean, but it definitely like, and, and, and they were talking to other people to be bought. So Google was not the only one in the right. running, but I think it does give you a little bit of leg up. They definitely know what's going on. They know what the company's about if they're doing venture. Oh, and, and they've made it. the they've made the announcement. You know, they're gonna um, they're gonna kind of leave it as its own entity. It's gonna be on its own in its own little world. Obviously, that the Google will try to integrate with it, but um, more than it has already. But like the app, there's all, there, the the app for iOS is still going to exist. I mean, I don't. Google doesn't care. I don't necessarily know if Google cares if you own an Android device. No, they care. Absolutely not. They care if you're consuming their services, yes. and they're going to put their services everywhere they can. They don't. They don't care if you're using a Chromecast if you're watching YouTube, or if you're using a Roku or using it. Well, I guess Roku just got it, or an Xbox or something. Right. They just want you to be using the service. Um, I think they, when they put out Android, they said we want to help nudge things in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, they took cues from Apple. You're finding Apple taking cues from them. I'm, I'm really amazed at the Google Nowish thing that's on my uh, on my. Uh, home screen now that tells me whether and how long it takes to get places mm -hmm. um that's pretty tremendous uh it's got my calendar and everything from facebook and, and google i mean it, it's all integrated it doesn't mm -hmm. matter it, i mean i'm really in the google ecosystem here as much as anything so i think i think we're going to see nothing but good things come of this i know some people are worried because one of the things <laughs> that nest does and i'll be interested to see within the next six months is they they promise you reduction in your electricity and and, and power consumption mm -hmm. um and it looks like it's going that way for us i'm not sure mm -hmm. this Good. This cold snap in Pittsburgh may have completely thrown off that because it... I'm really but, considering it. I know I have like an old. You just heard it probably shut off there on the on the on the audio. I have an old, old, old. We have thing. steam it heat. Doesn't matter. You have steam heat. We have like yeah. We have radiant heat. And actually, in the nest, you actually program and how how many square feet you have, mm. what kind of system you have, because then it can calibrate like how long it takes to heat up. Um, what the outside temperature is? Should it really kick on in the morning? Like in the early in the early spring. Should it kick on, or is the house going to warm up anyway? I, I I heard a lot of these stories, and I was like half listening. I said nest, nest, nest. And I was like, I should get a nest. Like that's what happened with mm -hmm. the story with mm -hmm. me. Is I'm actually kind of looking into the idea of getting a nest and looking at that stuff. The, the thing that I think that people are really nervous about is the nest knows when you're home and you're not, and it <laughs> tracks it tracks your activity, and that's so, how how it actually. That's why you know. That's why it says that it's a learning thermostat that yeah. you don't have to program. Yeah. Because it does learn based on motion detection. So, so what if no that does that's not going to work for me because where my thermostat is I never pass my thermostat I'll go a day I'll, I'll work all day and not pass my thermostat. Well, then you would turn that off. You know yeah but that's nothing that's not going to work for us. The other thing though is is it knows if 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 you walked up there and you were you were a person that at night you turn your thermostat down mm -hmm. and in the morning you turn it up and before you leave you turn it back down it will also program it that way mm -hmm. where you don't have to actually say. On Mondays and whatever days, I want it to heat to this temperature at this time and turn down at this time and turn back up the next day at this time. It it will remember just by you, by the first two weeks of you just setting the temperature, it knows from then on and it will adjust accordingly. I don't think it would ever track my patterns. <laughs> I have like two days I'll be able to track. That's it. The way, the way I do, do things. I'm a, uh, it doesn't work for work at home, I bet. Um, but, but could you imagine if it is something where it's connected with Google Now sometime in the future? That is already tracking. Already says, hey, this was a good idea I heard too. It was um, um, the idea that, hey, your phone knows it takes you 15 minutes to get home. Mm -hmm. Your Nest knows that it takes you 10 minutes to warm everything up. Mm -hmm. So it will turn it on in the right, mm -hmm. right. time. So I think that's a pretty cool idea, and that could be a feature of this too. And I'm hoping they take some design elements from the Nest people and um, mm -hmm. start yeah. moving that into the Android mm -hmm. OS and potentially things like Chrome and whatnot. I, I just I see this being a good thing, not a bad thing. 
but then again, I'm not super paranoid crazy like some people. So. Hey, back on the Chrome thing, since we were complaining about it from Spoon, Chrome opens instances for every extension and tab. It's a Windows resource hog. Don't even try using Chrome in Hangouts with more than a few people. Um, yeah, yeah, I see that. It it it's drags my laptop down whenever whenever uh, you need you know to do HD with them. You need four cores. Doesn't matter how fast it is. You need four cores. Can they be two hyper-threaded cores? I think I think hyper-threaded counts uh, with it. It says like four logical cores. I don't know, uh, but I think like an i5 or something you can get it out of it. I, I have to I haven't tested it with my Mac Mini yet. I have so. an i7. It doesn't tell me what kind of how many cores. I think sevens are typically four. Number of cores two. Hmm. One processor dual core. It's an i7. But it's the MacBook Air, so... Yeah, yeah, you might not get it out of that guy. So I'm uh, hoping they come out with a new Mac Mini. That's probably going to be my next... I'd be looking at that, because I'm kind of... I'm kind of at that point where it's like, oh, maybe they could use a little bit of an update. Actually, I'm looking at a MacBook Pro before... Probably See, this is great portability-wise, mm -hmm. and I have a lot of speed for things like Photoshop, and it, it actually runs things as iMovie perfect. It's I want, I want a powerhouse at home. I need. I, I like the portable need, powerhouse too. Yeah, so, you need a portable. Like you I, want a portable power. I want that por that that portable powerhouse <clears throat> that will that will make this mobile, so mm -hmm. I can take it and do this for, like I said, the wrestling shows and shoots and do full HD and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my roadmap for for how I'm going to do things here. So, um, well, with that, guys, so we talked about a lot of awesome things. Um, and uh, thanks, guys. Thanks, Chilla. Thank you. And Katie for joining us. Uh, at Chilla, at K Dutters, <laughs> of course. Uh, thank you guys for joining us live.sorgatronmedia.com where you can join us every Tuesday night on the live stream or flip it to your Chromecast or however you want to watch it. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, and, of course, you can find us over at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at, at AwesomeCast, on Facebook, on Google+. Uh, you can also find us on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV. Uh, YouTube, Stitcher, and now Spreaker. Um, and also drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. With that, thanks to our awesome chat room that's been uh, hopping all night. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Get it awesome.